My name's Jay Postones, and in this lesson, I'm going to teach you to play a Tesseract song. The wonderful humans over at Minel Symbols recorded me in the studio in Nashville about a month ago recording Concealing Fate Part 1 from a Tesseract album that was released about 500 years ago. And there's some crazy ideas in that song that I'd like to make slightly less crazy for you today. That's the groove that we're going to focus on first. And why? Because there's loads of cool stuff going on and it's going to help you develop limb independence, especially with your left hand, because there's some left hand crashes in there that are in slightly awkward places. For you to really make this one groove, you want to sit with the three over two polyrhythm for a little while. That is the easiest one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Two and three at the same time, starting and finishing at the same time. That's all that is. And we're going to place that there. So the threes are up on the right hand. They're actually on the china in the groove, but I'm going to place it on the hi-hat so I can explain it without it being crazily loud. We're going to get that first. That is the basis of that groove. And then over the top of that as well, we're going to do the pedal hat. That is hitting on the exact same hits as the right hand. That's nice and easy. That's the first thing to get down. Then along to that, we're going to place the snare drum. There. So we've got a little loop. Slow it down. Fairly straightforward groove is the first exercise. The reason we start in there is that eventually that more complex groove pulls on that as kind of a base. So that's where we develop everything from. We start to displace things and we start to add our symbol accents and all that kind of stuff in, but that is where we're going to start. Now we're going to do some fun things to that kick drum pattern. We're going to start chopping it up a little bit. And how we're going to do that is by first slowing everything down. And for every hi-hat, pedal hat chick, or right hand hit that we're playing, those quarter notes, we're going to turn those into eighth notes, at least in our mind. So instead of being one, two, three, four, we're going to count one and two and three and four and. Because the kick drum pattern that we play jumps between being on the beat and on the off beat, which is what those ands are. So one and is going to come back in on some of those ands. Let me just demonstrate that. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. Okay. Little slower. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that is the pattern that we're going to play. If you want to get the notation for that, then it's up on the website. I'll overlay it on the exercise video next for you if you want to follow that. But if you want to slow it down and practice it at a speed that makes sense for you to start at, go and check it out on the website.
that shouldn't be too difficult to learn, especially if you've taken the time to slow that exercise down, get those kicks placed nice and accurately, then build it back up to the intended speed, which is 150 BPM on my metronome over here, then you should have that one down. Next, we're going to build on the limb independence part of that by putting in the crashes and a couple of ghost notes. And also, I want to bring my right hand up to the intended place, which is the china, to make it sound real heavy. How do we get there? For a groove like that the first time, I'm going to probably break it down into smaller chunks if it's something that's brand new to me that I haven't played before. Otherwise, I'm going to start with exercise two, right? I'm going to literally start there and see which of those accents I can start placing my left hand on. Because all that's happening with those left hand cymbal accents is that they're landing on those kicks. They're not in the middle of kicks. They're landing exactly with them. So you already have the the root of where that pattern is going to be. You just need to practice slowly placing that left hand in some of those places. And when it comes to choosing which of those works for me, it's subjective, okay? I'm not playing every single one. Some of them sound more musical to me. It's kind of a personal choice. And I choose specific symbols for that reason. If you go to the Minel website, you can see my current symbol setup. And it's a very musical setup, and it's chosen for that reason, because I can kind of jump from a really fast crash, which is my main one on the left-hand side. I want that to be real fast. And then I've got a big riding crash over here, 22-inch massive crash, and then something in the middle that kind of fits in between both. And when I hit between the three, I've got a nice kind of musical difference between them. I try and choose all of my symbols like that for that reason, knowing that occasionally they're going to be quick little accents that I'm going to reach with either my left hand or my right hand. So if you want the sticking for those left and right symbol accents, all of those, I'm going to put those up on the website. I'm going to play the exercise slower for you now and try and talk you through it. But if you just want to jump straight into it with the left and right sticking, go and check it out on the website. The first change is a little ghost note that I play with my left hand on the snare drum right at the end of that first bar. And something about playing that leads me into the, the next section nicely. It kind of helps to keep me in time. It's a tiny, tiny thing to do, but it does make a difference. So try and get that in. So moving into the second bar, there's a few changes as well. We've got some cymbal accents that are going to require us to basically play a paradiddle on the cymbals. Right, left, right, right. We start out with a china on the right hand. Left hand's going to reach over to the crash, one of our accent crashes, back to the china. And then from the china, I'll sweep my right hand over to the closest crash. So China, left crash, China, right crash. And those match up with kicks. And immediately after that second right hand crash, I bring my left hand down for a snare hit. So that's why I'm not doing right, left, right, left. I like to play right, left, right, right, left. So I can really connect with that snare accent. There's only really a small change in the third bar. We've got a left hand cymbal accent with that first kick drum. So we're playing the china into a left hand crash back into another china. That's the main difference. And I also play a double stroke on my, uh, on my kick drum as well. That's a small change, you don't need to do that. But I like putting those little ghost kick drums in sometimes. It's like a ghost note on the kick drum. I use heel toe technique for that. So the first hit is a little quieter then the second one is like the intentional hit that should be there anyway. The fourth bar's probably got the most going on. Uh, we're going to start out with a china and a crash cymbal, or two crashes, either of those two things. The snare drum placement changes in this bar as well, so that gets brought to the two and. One, two and. The one and, two and, three and, four and. One, two and. That's where the snare's going to go. And then on the three and, we've got a left hand cymbal accent as well. So two and, three and. We're going to be playing right, left, right, left for that. First left is on the snare, second left is going to be up on a uh, cymbal. And then leading out of that bar, into the fifth bar, we've got a couple of fast ghost notes that are going to be played on the, on the left hand. I'll just play those as a double stroke with my left hand. And that leads us into the final bar of this pattern, where again I'm going to play a right, left, right, right pattern. Only this time we're going to play the right hand on the china, then a ghost note with the left, and then back over to the china with the right hand. And then we're going to sweep that right hand round onto a crash. So, China, Ghost, China, Crash.
next thing I'd like to show you is how to achieve that metric modulation feel where we're changing time because we're not really changing time we're just changing the note length we're just changing it to a triplet feel so instead of doing that we're doing that or maybe that which is your polyrhythm there's two ways of thinking about this we're just changing the note length or we're just changing it to the three over two poly we're just using the other number from that polyrhythm we, we get changing to the three instead of the two. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's really the two ways that you could think about that. Both of them are correct. The other way of thinking about it is that maybe it's just a tempo change. There's all these different ways of thinking about it, and they're all correct. All these different ways of thinking about how you can perceive this, uh, this difference. But in reality, all we're doing is changing the note length. So we're going to play a couple of bars of that previous groove, and then we're going to change the note length to the triplet feel so that we can practice the transition between those two feels because once you've got that transition down then going into a more complex version of it isn't as difficult. Did you catch what I did there? Right hand stayed the same. Left foot stayed the same, but the feel that I went for, it seemed as though it sped up. It didn't speed up at all though. The note length changed to a triplet. So follow along with me. Couple of bars. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then right at the end of that second bar, after the fourth beat, I've got a little triplet double stroke that I'm playing that leads me into the feel of the next uh, the next bar that we play, or the next two bars of the triplet feel. Let's see if you can spot that. There you go. I like that particular pattern because it fills in a lot of the gaps and I like playing with ghost notes, so maybe Sitting with that pattern is something that you might enjoy developing because loads of ghosts and there's also a heel toe kick element which is going to develop that double stroke with your right leg or your, your dominant leg. Sorry lefties, your dominant leg if, uh, if that's something that you're interested in working on. Now, in that groove within the song, I'm playing this cool double kick pattern that is very short, but it's really, really effective. And there's a particular pattern that I'm playing there that enables me to groove more with it. Whenever I'm playing triplet-based double kick stuff, rather than playing right, left, right, left, which a lot of people might do, I tend to play right, left, right, right. So... Okay, right, left, right, right, left, right. And I'm using double, uh, I'm using heel toe for that. Specifically when I'm playing triplet feel, that pattern, that technique tends to open it up quite a lot for me. So if you're struggling with right, left, right, left, ah, I'm playing threes, why can't it all be my dominant leg? Try doing something like that, right, left, right, right. So that's the kind of pattern that we're gonna play. If you are more comfortable playing right, left, right, left, don't reinvent the wheel. If that works for you, if you can play it comfortable and it feels like it grooves, stick with that. I'm not telling you to change, but if it does feel a little bit like, uh, then maybe try right, left, right, right. And the pattern that we're gonna play is this.
pretty sick little pattern and we're going to try and get that up to 150 bpm and if you want to go faster than that because you're a crazy person then be my guest That's actually a nine stroke pattern. If you can get that down, then you're messing with nines, which is pretty advanced. Let me explain how it's a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That kick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's gonna repeat after nine uh, strokes down there. So if you've got that down, congratulations. Let's move on. Let's try and include that pattern within the context of the final groove. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Doesn't have to be though. Let me explain it a little bit more. You've practiced that double kick pattern in the triplet feel and for the first section of that groove, it's gonna be the same. We're just playing that pattern that we've learned. First change comes with that splash symbol. So my left hand sneaks up from the snare to a splash symbol, which, okay, on my electric kit is the rim of this tom. I'm cheating, I'm sorry, I don't have space in my inputs to have an extra symbol, and I also want to keep this space empty so that you can see my beautiful face. But pretend for a moment that that's an actual splash symbol. There's your first change. And at that point, the, the pattern does kind of change a little bit, but we're still keeping within that, uh, that triplet feel. And the important thing that I found when learning that beat, I rely very heavily on my right foot and my dominant foot to play all of those singles and doubles that come after that. So. There's only another two instances where I'll do right, left, right, right. Okay, there's only another two of those. Other than that, it's all right foot based. And again, that's a comfort thing for me. It's because I'm definitely stronger with my right foot than I am with my left. I'm more competent with that one, so I lean on my strengths. Um, but if you feel as though maybe I can play this right, left, right, left, right, that might be easier for you, knock yourself out. Everything up until this point with your drumming will have taught you to do it in a certain way and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. There's only something wrong with that if it hurts, okay? If it hurts when you're playing it, that's when it's wrong and you need to maybe consider changing the technique. Let me slow down that pattern for you and then we're gonna play it through as an exercise. That's the pattern much slower. You might want to watch that round a couple of times. You may be wondering what on earth is happening during that fill at the end. Because how am I able to keep that going to that metronome? I'm using a polyrhythm, my friends. Yes, I am. The three over four polyrhythm specifically. So we're playing at this speed. Okay. And then to that, if I... Put the threes of a three, four poly. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. If I play those threes, I can then, I can play that over it. I'm locking into that pulse. So that's an example of using the three over four poly with them or a poly with them to achieve metric modulation. We're using the other number from that poly and we're switching the feel but we're still locked into the pulse 
of the thing we've been playing. And by playing out that section using that polyrhythm, using the other number from that polyrhythm, it enables to, us to establish a tempo for the next section of that groove. And that's something that you'll hear quite often in Tesseract music. Whenever we change quickly from tempo to tempo, more often than not, if it's not just a BPM or two jump for a chorus to give it a bit more energy because we do that, it's using a, a polyrhythm to achieve, or the other number from a polyrhythm to achieve that metric modulation jump. And if you've worked with polyrhythms enough, if you've kind of sat with those numbers, you'll start to be able to pick out, right, that could be the three over that four, that could be the two over that four, Ooh, that could be that five over that four. There's all these things that you can start to do. And that's just an example of it in a very early Tesseract song. Once again, to see everything that I'm doing in slow motion with all of the left, right shenanigans, head over to my website because you can play this exercise on there and you can slow it down and you can loop sections and you can listen to just a synthesized version of it and lots and lots of other nice things. But for now, we're going to try and do something horrible and play that groove with that mental outro bit up at 150 BPM. If that didn't tangle your brain, then you have nothing more to learn. Congratulations, you have completed the drums. If that did tangle your brain a little bit, don't worry about it. These things can be a little bit tricky. And if you want to deep dive into that kind of stuff, check this out. This is my progressive drumming masterclass. It's the most popular option that I've got for students since launching it last February. I've had over 100 students join and growing, and it covers everything that I consider to be the most important to learn these complex styles of drumming. We start out with practice routine, optimizing your practice routine, getting one in place if you don't have one in place and removing all the obstacles surrounding that, making it super, super easy for you to follow and to identify what you will practice specifically, taking that question away forever, which is wonderful. Then we get into fundamentals, correcting any technique issues, sorting out efficiency and flow around the kit, making it super, super easy for you so that when we reach the more difficult stuff, then you're absolutely flowing. And then the remaining three modules cover the most important things, your polyrhythms, your metric modulation, your specific patterns that you want to focus on that are the most important to make all this stuff super, super easy. And we obviously get into some fairly technical ideas and push all elements of limb independence and timing and groove and dynamic control. All of those things we focus on heavily. If you want to speak to me in a bit more detail about that, we can. There's going to be a link up here sometime now. And you can hit that and you can schedule a call with me. There's a little form that you'll fill out. Put your information in there. We can have a talk on Zoom if you want to do that. If you don't and you just want to get started, then the link is going to be in the description below to do that. If you don't want to do that and you just want the free lessons, that's also fine. Don't worry. There's a bunch of free lessons up on my website. There's a bunch that are up on YouTube. Go and check out those because they're going to be super helpful. For this final exercise, then, we're going to combine everything we've just learned. We're going to play that first groove into that second groove, into that metric modulation fill, and we're going to do that to a metronome. And if you want to play along to the music without the drums, you can go and do that on my website.
As always, for those of you who've made it this far into the lesson, thank you very much for your time, for choosing this over what someone else is saying on the internet that might or might not be helpful. If this was helpful and you think I've earned it and you're not already, consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that little bell. I think it's a little bell, I don't know. There's something that you can hit that gets a notification to you when I post another one of these. And doing that really does help because the algorithm, that mysterious algorithm where the internet likes to continually move the goalposts for people like me who are trying to make a living from music, by subscribing you're telling that algorithm, hey this guy's doing something useful and it's good and maybe other people would benefit from it and then some of those other people get to see it as well. So thank you very much for those who have already subscribed and thank you if you are a new subscriber. I'm about to go off and get another drum lesson prepped ready for next week. If you've got any ideas around what you'd like me to cover, what you'd like that to be, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see and I'll think about it. Until then, thanks very much.